Cheers. To life. Isn't that wonderful? Making it real awkward again with ah, that other drink. I don't know what you're talking about. I've never been awkward in my life. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Back again for right now, this lovely Monday morning. The sun is not shining, but that's fine because you have Drew and Colin. And me. Here this morning. Now, Colin, we're both wearing gray t-shirts, so that's I decided great. just in case, just so people don't, oh. just so people uh, don't get us confused. I actually normally wear glasses outside yeah, and the I, office. Yeah, so and I, 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 I really don't. I have these, but really for no reason. Um, anyway, today we're going to chat about some ink, you know? Yes. I was talking to Colin last week. I'm like, dude, what should we talk about? And he had the bright idea. and like, hey, we don't talk about inks as much as we should. And if we do talk about inks, it tends to be a lot of the same ones. It's right. Emerald of Chavor, it's Ancient Copper, mm -hmm. it's um, those sort of mainstays that everyone's used to. But um, I think we wanted to delve in a little bit deeper and go with some more of the underrated inks. Right. Some inks that maybe don't get as much press as they should, but Colin and I think maybe it's time for folks to, you know, <laughs> open their eyes a little bit up at them. So uh, he brought a few, I brought a few. We're going to chat about them. So Yes. And our methodology here is we went to uh, our website, Gulli Pens, and you can sort by popularity. And so we did that, and then we went to the last page. So yep. this is truly, you know, underrated or unpopular inks. And I was surprised to see if, see some of them back there because they had some of my favorites back there. I was like, what? Come on, there Noodler's Beaver ones. all the way down at the back. Noodler's Beaver. It's, well, it's, it's getting some love today. So anyway. Um, you want to start us off? Well, no, let's, how about you get started off because you've actually got some inked up already. Yes, I, I actually inked up. And I'm going to actually start with Diamine Brandy Dazzle. Um, this is actually the least popular <clears throat> shimmer ink that we sell according to our website, which is just crazy to me. Because if someone were to tell you we have diamond ancient copper, but it's shimmery, you would think that would sell pretty well. Ancient copper is popular, shimmer is popular. Yeah, so it, it's a little bit more on the orange side, I think, than ancient copper, which is more on the brown. Um, but you can see the shimmer is great. Um, so yeah, I was just, I, that was one of the inks that I was very surprised to see at the bottom of the list, because I've heard of Brandy Dazzle quite a bit. Um, Yes. Well, I'm just going to give some browns some love because to me, brown inks, and I need to grab a uh, paper towel or something, wipe off my glass then, but <laughs> brown inks don't get the love that they deserve. They, I think, are a great alternative to when you're trying to have those professional inks. Usually people go for blue or black when they're like, all right, well, I want to, you know, I wanted this needs to be an office ink. But I think browns are just as good. They're right there. They're not going to be offensive to anyone's eye. They can be understated. They can be a little bit more loud and crazy if you want them to be. Um, but they don't have to be. And Noodlers actually has some really good browns. Um, Beaver, as you just saw right there, is a more reddish brown. Um, and honestly, Noodlers brown just doesn't get um, a lot of love because they've got some more popular ones like Kiowa Pecan. Uh, walnut. Walnut's a little bit more popular. Mm -hmm. But they're just regular brown is really, really good looking. Drew, do you feel like you're biased because it's your last name? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Anyone want a Drew Brown ink? Well, we don't have a Ginther <laughs> ink, so... Um, no, I think that uh, it's a good alternative for professional uh, choices. And yeah, and Brian actually mentions uh, Noodler's Walnut in our top five work-appropriate inks, which stayed away from the blues and blacks. So um, I think really any brown, especially more of the darker ones like that. What about that, me? Um, you def said, you definitely said, not work appropriate you said, this brown. You said any brown. You said any brown. <laughs> any Noodler's brown. Duh. Know. Um, you're probably the complete opposite of work appropriate, <laughs> as you can tell by his Dwight shirt. This is super work appropriate. <laughs> um, so next, I will go into a personal favorite of mine, one that I write with constantly, and that is Robert Oster, Direct Son. And every time I ink it up, I'm always like, Wow. It's just such a bold and bright red with a little bit of orange um, shading in it, just a little bit. I mean, I don't. The name itself, Direct Sun, I feel is very appropriate. I remember when we uh, first started uh, contemplating carrying Robert Osh. Remember mm -hmm. we did that swab party and yes. you know we all got together and we just got swabbed to them all up. Them. Yeah, and Direct Sun just jumped off the page because mm -hmm. we did a bunch of different uh, paper types. We did Tomoe River and uh, Claire Fontaine, and I remember putting it on Tomoe and just. It just popped. Yeah. It really popped. Yeah, Robert Oster, um, they have a lot of, they're really popular with like the blue with red sheen, but I think they do the reds really well. 
This, Strixon, um, Rubine is another one that's very similar. Um, Astaquiza Rot, which I think I'm saying correctly. Is that's a, how I would say it. It's a darker red. It's really great. So um, Robert Oster as a brand has a lot of options. Yeah, they really do. And um, I'm moving over here to a Karen Dosh ink. And I know that these don't get talked about a lot. Um, for one part, they're, I think, the most per volume, uh, ex most expensive ink we have. Pricey, for sure. Um, sure. And this here is delicate green. Now, Karen Dosh has a lot of more standard colors. I feel like I chose this one because I feel like it's a little bit more unique. This more lime little kind of calm down green. And I really like this one. It has, it has good shading. Yeah. And I think that if you're going to try to pick a unique ink within this collection that you can't find anywhere else, well, I mean, you, you could find something similar somewhere else. But I think this is the most standout-ish ink that they have in their line. And their inks really do perform well. Yeah. And I think this brand, because of its, you know, uh, cost. Yeah, cost. <laughs> is that the um, word? Yeah, is a really good candidate for choosing samples. Yeah. So that's why we have samples so that you can check before you buy because it is a little bit of an investment. Mm -hmm. The bottle's really cool. So you're, you are getting, you know, a couple little yeah. extra features you're looking there. for a statement type of bottle. Right. It's that's a really a good bottle. One. And it, but it is really good ink. So they do have some fun stuff in their line. So check it out. All right. Next, I have Deatrementis Frankincense, which is kind of a unique ink because it is a scented ink. Um, I'm not usually gravitating towards gray inks because for the most part, I'm just like, well, I want to try something a little bit more bold. Right. Um, but I think that's a great option. I know Earl Grey was huge this year. Um, so definitely there's a desire for gray inks out there. Um, I think this is a unique uh, option because it, it has a little bit of shading. Um, it goes from almost black to more of a pencil-y gray. Um, and then the scented thing, which is, you, it's not gonna over, <laughs> over blast you with scent, um, but as you're writing, you get a little bit of frankincense. The scent of franken. Yes. Does it smell like it when it's dry? No, so that's kind of the, <laughs> that's well, kind of the like thing with it. Anyway. Yeah, so <laughs> it's like as I think it's intended as you're writing, you get the scent. Um, I mean, you can always smell it in the sample itself, Drew. That smells better than the micarta I sniffed last I week. I smell it. Yes, that, that smells pretty good. So it if does. you just want to have a sample to smell, it does. It's not it bad. It smell like like it's not. Oh, see. To be honest, I don't even Matt, know what that smells. It's is. like. Oh. Uh, it, it could be a lot. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> no, I've never actually smelled real frankincense before. Yes. Um, so what do we have to I moved now? on. I moved on to another brand that we don't speak about a ton, uh, Jay Urban, and they've got a lot of really good inks. I know um, a lot of people are a fan of uh, their dusty purples. Did like you talk the... about that one? Oh no, I didn't talk about Burma Road. Uh, Burma Road's <laughs> the third brown I chose, and you can see it's more of a dark green than a brown. Mm. But this one I used for a long time because the availability of Noodler's L. Lawrence, which is my favorite ink. Uh, has not always been great. So Burma Road is my backup. I really like that. It's a really fun color and it's part of Noodler's V-Mail series which were all kind of like reverse engineered from inks used during uh, wartime and it's got a fun story to it. So check it out especially if you're a fan of L. Lawrence and can't seem to find it anywhere. Yeah, you're a big fan of the subtle uh, off black almost. I do. Yeah, I love the I love the black a greens. Lawrence, Burma Road. Yeah. I do you like Shivago. I do. That Shivago is like the third one. It's it's See? it's Shivago, Burma Road Brown, and L. Lawrence. Those are the three. Like mm -hmm. you know, if you can't find one, you can use the other. And honestly, those are cool because it, if you're you know doing something like we do and signing notes, mm -hmm. it's you pick which one is more fun to write with. Like which one is the more fun ink to title. Like Shivago is fun to write. Very. These are great. Yes. Um, but no, I moved on to uh, Jerbon uh, Vert Olive, mm. and uh, I don't think that olive inks get enough love. They don't. Th those are one of my favorite types of greens, and this one is really cool because it has a little bit more shading than something like Noodler's Army Green or something that's a little more of the drab look, sure. which I also like. <laughs> but this one's just a little bit lighter, so you get a little bit more shading. That's why I picked it. Yeah, I think that's well, a great yeah. option. <clears throat> it seems very similar to Roaring Klinger. Uncle Groom. Which is a beautiful, beautiful color. Yes, and also one of more our more popular inks. So mm -hmm. this is a good alternative if you want to try a different brand. Mm -hmm. um, that's one thing I love to do is just try different brands and see what works in each pen. Because, you know, certain inks will just 
perform better. Right, and again, uh, Jerry Bond's got some cool bottles too. Oh yeah, they. It's not well known, but they have a pen rest mm -hmm. attached to their bottles. It's a little scoop that, especially if you're dipping with a glass pen, you can just lay the pen right in this little groove at the front yeah. of the bottle. It's great. All right, my last one is Monteverde Emerald Green. Now, I actually got hip to this because late last year they had a promo um, where you got a free bottle of ink with a purchase of a pen. What? And yes. Uh, hopefully that comes back. But um, So I, I opted for this on some sort of Monteverde pen that I bought. I don't know which one. Um, but this sort of teal, um, I, I don't know what, how else to call it, but like a bluish teal. It's like a sea foamy. Sea foamy. It's kind of underrated. I was looking at our swab shop um, to kind of compare and see what it, what it worked next to. And there wasn't a lot of popular inks there, um, which I was surprised because I think it's a very nice color. Um, I think the closest thing I saw that people might be familiar with is Robert Oster Peppermint. Oh, I love Peppermint. Yeah, which is a pretty big alternative to Emerald Chavor. Um, so this is a little bit lighter, um, but I, I still think it's a great ink. And Monteverde, I think, has a line. is very underrated. It really is. Um, it has some great color. They perform great. They're no-nonsense, very easy to clean out. Yeah, um, when they first showed up, I was more or less, you know, dismissive of them. And then... Uh, a couple people on my team were like, no, Drew, seriously, don't sleep on Monteverde because yeah. they produce some really good ink, and they absolutely do. I've become in love with some of their colors. Yes. I should definitely give that one a try, too. Uh, and your last Yeah, one. my last one's Diamond Coral. Uh, this one, I will admit, I'm not a huge fan of, but uh, Cindy on my team loves this ink, and uh, I actually know a couple other people that do as well. And it was very low on the list of popularity on Diamine, and I think it's one of the more unique ones that uh, we can get from a certain line. And that's one thing I also considered is which colors, you know, are more hard to replicate across brands. Because usually if you find a good blue in one brand, you can find a similarly good blue For sure. in another brand if you have some brand loyalty there. So I tried to pick things that were, you know, less of that, mm -hmm. more unique. I mean, none of these, you can find similar ones across other brands, yeah. but it's going to be a little bit more difficult with I think the ones that I choose. So I would check out Diamond Coral. It's not pink, it's not orange. Um, it's it's coral. coral. So, you know, and I think that that's a fun uh, color to write with. Absolutely. It's a little flat, which sometimes I like. Um, yeah, I do too. I, I don't know why. There's I love some... when you, it writes wet and then dries very flat. Yeah, it, it's, 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 there's something cool about a really flat looking ink. Mm -hmm. You know, not like shading is cool. Yeah. But usually it's not flat. Usually it's just like not a lot of shading. When something right. just is totally flat mm -hmm. and kind of a lighter color, it just looks Absolutely. interesting. I'm with you there. Well, yeah, that was a lot of things. Yeah, that was about um, it. You know, um, check them out. We'll, you know, you'll list these in the uh, yes, description. All, so. all these will be linked in the description, so just click down there. Anything else you want to cover, Andy? <laughs> Andy's going to tell us about our weekend. No. No. All right. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled program uh, later this week. Yes. And should they ride on? I don't know. Uh, sure, ride on. Ride on. Yeah, do that. <laughs>